It's our second day and um, uh, it's the first day was actually even better than I thought it was going to be. The, we actually visited five agencies, not four, um, as I said in my preview. Uh, so it was a long day and got back here um, uh, US time at about half past 10 last night. So uh, four o'clock your time this morning. <laughs> um, and, but it was, it was well worthwhile and, and fantastic. So just to share with you a few highlights, so the agencies that we saw first up was, um, and this is by the way, our badge, that I, the badge that I wear the whole time. It's got the whole agenda on the back. Um, the, the, so what we saw, um, who we met, we met with Chael Connect Plus, um, and it's the Chael Group, uh, which includes Iris Worldwide, which is the purchase, um, the acquisition they made uh, several years ago. And they, they talked about the four strong forces that are shaping business at the moment, uh, which is uh, the growth of the worldwide middle class um, and how that is predicted to, to grow exponentially. Um, uh, thus, all those people needing more connections, more ways of staying in touch, more technologies needed, and there is more money available. Pro private equi equity investment is certainly increasing. Another fascinating fact, um, there have been more startups in the last um, uh, while than there were uh, for previous years. So in the US alone, there were five and a half million startup uh, comp uh, new companies registered in 2021. I found that extraordinary. So they're seeing growth everywhere. Um, and it uh, requires obviously some new thinking um, and how uh, brands are going to behave in this era of growth. Uh, so they, they presented a number of case studies to us, which I'll be showing you uh, when I'm back, uh, when at, uh, doing our presentation at the end of, of this month. Um, and, uh, and you'll see uh, the kind of things that they have in mind. Anyway, so that was a great start to the day. Then we went on to an agency called DEPT, D-E-P-T. Uh, they are originally a, a Dutch agency. Uh, they were formed in 2015, so seven years ago. They're now 3,000 people on five continents um, in 18 countries. They won the Webby Network of the Year agency last year. We met them in Amsterdam um, actually in 2017 and extremely impressed with them then. They're a dig digital native agency. Um, and uh, they, they talked about um, breaking the silos down between CIOs and CMOs, and they seem to have managed to do that, and they demonstrated the way in which they'd done that um, for us. Um, also, the way they construct their business is really interesting. There are 200 partners and shareholders um, in the business who own the business, so they have a whole employee ownership scheme. Um, they also talked about their B Corp for certification, which is all about diversity, and it's something that has to be worked on continuously. And I would liken this a little bit to how our BEE uh, programs in South Africa have had to work. So they showed us several con um, case studies for Spotify, Meta, um, and KFC, which again, I'll share with you um, at our presentation on the 1st of June. So the third agency was the Brand Tech Group. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, it was started by David Jones, formerly of Havas, um, and they're now in 40 countries. Uh, he launched it in 2015. There are 5,000 employees, and they experienced 50% growth in 2021. Um, they are not an advertising agency group. They're a brand tech group. So they have a number of companies that are all involved in tech, related to brands, related to marketing. Um, but he's very clear, uh, David, that they are not an advertising agency group and they've got no desire to be. Having said that, he, he does own, they do own the, uh, the, the Oliver Group, which um, as some of you may know is the internal, is the agency, uh, it's not an agency, but it's a, a, a group that builds in-house agencies for clients. So yes, so, so they have 44 of the top 100 global marketers as their clients, so they're doing very well. Um, and uh, the session really was devoted to exploding myths about the metaverse. This was the first time we talked about it um, and uh, 
David identifies it as a virtual world for social uh, and economic socializing. So, um, which is quite interesting. We talked about NFTs and the role of NFTs, blockchain, um, and all of this and how it's going to work in the future and what the impact is going to be. So that was very interesting. Um, and there were a few questions um, and uh, the kind of questions marketers are asking is, so how do I find my audience in the metaverse? How can my brand become part of the community? Um, and uh, is it an easy, is it an easy entry point? So there, so that was brand tech. Um, it seemed we went at a pace all day. And and what was interesting too is that, um, you know, traveling around New York in a in a bus, which is actually what we do as the consultants, um, was in, in also interesting yesterday because it's clear that there's there's less traffic. It's not. I mean, it's a very busy city, um, but there's less traffic. It obviously isn't raining this week, so the traffic goes a lot easier. Um, but we definitely got around more easily than we have in the past. I found that quite interesting. And it is because not everybody is back at work. I mean, the, you know, the agencies that we met, some of them are back a um, couple of days a week. Some are working hybrid. Um, some are working uh, in the office, et cetera. But, but in the main, um, yeah, they're still all coming back. So, so many people are still remote. We then went to an agency called Oberland. Um, and they are a uh, complete contrast to everybody we'd met during the day. Earlier on in the day, 25 people, independent, uh, owner-run, owner they're totally purpose-driven, and it was very genuine. I mean, you know, we hear about oh, everybody has to work with a purpose, but they actually demonstrated um, what they believe purpose is, and they, they talk about purpose being the new digital, which I thought was quite a nice quote. Um, and how there are so many sectors, even within purpose, sponsorship, CSR, cause marketing, issue advocacy, purpose-driven branding and purpose-driven business. So we spent a very interesting hour with them um, and some nice case studies for the Happy Egg Company, NYIT and the American Friends of the Hebrew um, University, which I think you'll all get have great fun out of. Um, and uh, Accessor and Blue Man Group. So quite a few nice case studies there. So our final session of the day was with Stagwell, um, who positioned themselves as, as a technology-based marketing services company. So essentially, we've been seeing meeting with Stagwell a few times in the last few years, and they've wanted to see us because they want to show us and tell us all about what they're doing and how they're doing it and how they're building their business. Um, it's very impressive what they've managed to do. Um, they took over, Stagwell essentially was a, a, its own group and then it took over the MDC group. Uh, and MDC was one of the smaller holding companies with a number of different advertising agencies in. They've restructured um, and they've streamlined, made it much more efficient. They're expanding uh, all over the world. Um, they've now moved into one building. When Stagwell took over MDC, the agencies were all in different buildings, and they're now in one building. They've actually taken over seven floors of the One Trade Center, which is where we were last night, um, with the most amazing views um, and <laughs> incredible, actually. Uh, and I'll tell you about the lift experience uh, at the end of this when I sign off. But yes, so they are expanding all over uh, and they will be expanding into into Africa. They do have affiliates actually in Africa, uh, affiliate when I say affiliates, not agencies, but production companies. So they're in media, they're in creative, they're in digital, they're in everything. And they've also produced a lot of uh, uh, technology tools for marketers, which are proprietary tools for them. Uh, so they've done a lot of development, invested into their business, very successful um, and uh, clearly have learned the lessons or the, from the mistakes that um, perhaps some of the other holding company groups have made in the past. Uh, so yes, so so we finished the day with a um, superb dinner, uh, a, another debate about the metaverse, um, and um, which is on everybody's lips. And then we left, uh, as I say, it was about 10 o'clock in the evening, and jumped into the lift to go down a hundred floors, a hundred floors in 
I think it was 10 seconds. Honestly, it was like being on a rocket. And <laughs> that's an extraordinary experience. Uh, but wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And as I say, the most superb, the most superb views from the building itself. So yes, so that was Monday, a whirlwind um, and some wonderful learning. So today we're seeing another five agencies and we're starting off with BCCP, then we're going to Dentsu, then we're seeing the Mars Agency, then we're seeing MINC, and we're finishing up with Virtue um, at the end of the day. So more news tomorrow and um, uh, nice to sh be able to share this with you. And I hope you're enjoying these commentaries uh, and I'll see you all um, on the 1st of June when we when we show you all the work uh, and uh, share a few more tidbits of what we've learned on the way through. OK, goodbye for now. See you tomorrow.